Tuesdays for this Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm quite aware you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, ladies and gentlemen, but you decided to be here with me. And I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my good friends, on this nice, uh, now it's fall, now we can't even say summer, I guess. You know, some people say it's summer, but I say it's fall in this nice day here in New York City. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special, we got a, we got an action-packed show as usual. I got a special guest, as you can see on the screen. We're going to talk to this young man. But before I do that, I always like to state my intentions. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life transition. So that's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. And speaking of honest conversation, before we go on, we got my man Chris, the, the voice of the Jaspers, Uncle Smoothie joining us. What's going on, Smoothie? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. So speaking of honest conversations, I have a special guest here joining us today, man. Exclusive interview on my end. Hey, he doesn't do a lot of these things, so I'm glad to have him on. So I'm going to read his bio, very extensive bio, so bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, on that. So my special guest at the age of 12 played for the famed New York City Gauchos. Then he switched to the rival team, Riverside Church. We got to talk about that, man. When he, when he played with the point guard, as I call him, Kenny Anderson, man, one of the best players to ever do it here in New York City. He played at Christ the King High School. Then he transferred to our Savior Lutheran in the Bronx, where he teamed up with the A-Train, Arnold Bernard. Man, that's one of my rivals back in the day growing up. We're going to talk about that. And my man, Jonathan Duck. Rest in peace to Jonathan Duck, man, and Coach Booker as well. My guest won a state championship at, uh, at that was at Laura Island Lutheran. You won the state championship? Our Savior Lutheran. Our Savior Lutheran, okay. What year was that there, special guest? 87. 87. All right. He won a state championship at 87. Then from there, he went to Coffeyville J- JC in Kansas. Then after, I, and after that, he transferred to the University of Maryland, where he starred there. Great run there. Now, he played his. He started his whole career at Maryland, and he played professionally in Turkey. Now he currently works at a high school as administrator for discipline and for special and and uh, uh, yeah, administrator for for discipline. And my special guest just recently got married. We're gonna talk about that, Mr. Newlywed. We're gonna talk about that as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, please help me welcome Mr. Garfield Smith to Transition Tuesdays. Let me get the applaud button going. Hold on. All right, Garfield, what's good, my man? <laughs> Just living life, right? <laughs> there you go, man. Oh man, my man G, man. Hey, man, it's a pleasure having you, man. Uh, you know, we got to talk it earlier too, so we, you know, I got a lot of good questions for you. But I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure, G, if you, um familiar with my show but i play music for my for my guest here so i'm gonna play this tune for you man and hopefully you can hear because sometimes it's hard to hear from the laptop to the phone but i'll play this tune for you and i want you to think about when you first heard this song i just want to get your thoughts on this song here right okay so i'm gonna play this little this little tune here hopefully you can hear it can you hear that Curtis Blow Basketball. Now, Garfield, when you first heard this song, what do you think of this song by Curtis Blow? When you first heard this, man, I want to get your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, man. And it, it is cool how basketball 
and like hip hop intertwined, you know, like when you, you know, when you're working out, you know, or you have your preseason workouts, or maybe, you know, when you're playing in high school and in college, you know, you got your go to songs that you listen to, you like listening to. Do you have like, did you have like a go to song like in college, which you used to listen to, man? Anything in like college, that? I did. In high school, I did. Uh huh. Uh, Mm-hmm. I like I like to listen to either reggae, mm. uh, um, but I also love listening to slow music. Yep. Uh, I, I, I listen to a lot of love music. Really? I listen to Nita Baker at Rapture like before every game. Really? Uh, like, wow. Yeah, I like I just like common music. I was always a calm guy before games. Right. I wasn't a, you know I was a rah rah guy. Uh-huh. I didn't like layup lines. Like, mm. I was just literally, you know I came for some reason I always thought if I warmed up it would be wasting my shots because I didn't want to wait for my buckets so, you know, Coach Gary Williams would make me go out there for you know the first two or three minutes to show camaraderie uh-huh. and I would just sit by him and we would talk really yeah. wow I wasn't, yeah I wasn't a really a lot of uh, you know like I had to get a good 10 minute warm up uh-huh. I was already more right I used to say I had an automatic heaters <laughs> That is cool, man. I used to remember when I used to warm up, especially at college. I used to get so tired, man, like warming up. I was like, man, I'm like gassed already. And the game didn't start yet. Yes, and, and those warm-up outfits we had on, they were heavy, man. Those were some heavy material. They were, right? Yeah. Yo. You, had a, you had on your jersey, which was a, that big, heavy material. Yep. Heavy from champ. And then you had on a shooting shirt. Uh-huh. You know, and then on top of that, you had on a jacket. You had on some pants. You know, we went baggy. Yep. You know, with all that stuff. And, you know, it's Yep. I was already swaying to just, just put all that stuff on. <laughs> and then, you know, the other thing was, uh, you know, I was in D.C., so I went to Maryland. Mm-hmm. You know, half my teammates were local, mm-hmm. and they got me into Go-Go. I used oh. to listen a little bit of Go-Go, too. Uh, oh. Yeah, you know, they had some really good stuff. I was like, oh, I like that. I still listen to this day on uh, some of it. Yep, Chuck Brown and all of the Chuck Brown and Soul Searches, all type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, guys, them guys uh, schooled me on a lot of that stuff. But, you know, they integrated a lot of regular hip-hop with Go-Go mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we, yeah, we're gonna talk about your Maryland exploits and everything. Hey, but you know, to to begin there, Garfield man, how are you and your family dealing with these two pandemics we got? You know, we got COVID obviously, and we got you know social injustice for you know black and brown people. So you know, how are you and your family coping with these two pandemics out there now? Yeah. I don't really drink, I don't smoke, I don't do much other than my, you know, my forte getaway is in the gym, working out, mm-hmm. or sitting at home, I'm a homebody, so, you know, I just, you know, I've always been a home, now, quarantine is what's me, before mm. pandemic, right. so I like being home alone by myself, or with my girl, right. my wife now, right. you know, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a far fetch, so, you know, for, I was like, oh, this is me every day, every day, anyway, okay, now we really got to stay, okay, That's true. and uh, I think I got that from my dad, because my dad's a, a loner, that way too we just love you know we just like being you know we don't like really the rah rah stuff so mm-hmm. you know that's all so you know I just kind of keep it quiet I have a daughter who uh you know who's the opposite she, you know she's a social butterfly right she wants to hang out and she's uh-huh. 24 just graduated from Florida State oh that's she great wants the, yeah she wants to be out in the mix she wants to be everywhere so you know that during the pandemic I'm like hey you gotta stay away yeah it's nice you gotta die you wanna go out there and hang out that's fine but you gotta stay with me for a couple weeks before you get back in Right, right. <laughs> you know, you know, we had that, you know, we had that tough love for a little bit, but you know, it's all about trying to be safe and mm-hmm. you know, just trying to stay positive. Uh, obviously, also I have to be careful because you know, my parents are down here as well. Yeah. And I go visit them on the weekends, and I got to also think about them, and I don't want to go out there and be too sociable, mm-hmm. and they got to bring something to them, and you know, they're in their upper seventies. Yeah. And you know, they're you know they're they're in great health, but I don't want to compromise them as well. Yeah, so, that's know, true. Be careful on all, you know, careful on all fronts. No, that's that. Uh, That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, not per se, but you know, I know the stories. And, you know, I was fortunate to have mom and dad and live in, you know, I lived in the suburbs for the most part. Mm. Um, so I didn't really have, you know, I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't too much of a number. I had to get in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I read a lot. You know, my dad read newspapers every day. So, you know, I always read about things happening. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm glad things are finally coming to light and things are, you know, things are being more on the forefront and not behind. Yeah. Because, you know, we already know we've been experiencing that forever. The only difference now is we 
It's being recorded. Yep. <laughs> That's true, man. Now nah, you're right. Hey, hey, Gulf, I'll be remiss now. I know you're from New York and your last name is Smith. Any relation to Stephen A. Smith, man? He, I know he's Jamaican too. Not even close. Nope, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, Right. <laughs> so I came here in 78 from Jamaica. I was about eight. Wow. I was born in 77. Okay. Uh, I was born in 69. I'm 52. That's 51. Going up 52. Right. Uh, but I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in the Vanderbilt Projects. Uh, okay. You know, until uh, probably about the first three or, uh, three or four years. Maybe a little longer. Uh, Vanderbilt Projects when we moved to the Bronx. Okay. Uh, you know, all the way up, all the way up town. Uh, you know, they just have. Uh-huh. What? I lived in Queens, left right, well, left right for a little bit, for about two years. That's how I made mean, it. Oh. Yeah, I move around the city just like. Oh, nice. Now, now, are you from a big family, small family growing up? So I have five sisters and one brother. Whoa. Okay. Now, now, how, uh, now you tall. How tall are you, Garfield? feel like six, eight, six, nine? How you tall, man? I'm six, six, seven. Six, six seven? seven All seven, right. Seven, We'll give you six eight. You know, we'll give you six eight. You know what I mean? Back in my day, I was taking now. You make me short. Right. Right, right, right. You know, like like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant say like he's six two. He's six twelve. I think he says now. Yep. You. Yep. Yep, yeah, you want all those inches, man, when you're small, when you're younger, man. That's true. That's so true. Hey, so who yeah, so who introduced you to basketball? Was this like your first love? Did you play other sports as well or? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess it was basketball. You know, when I was in Jamaica we played a lot of you know, I was young, so I didn't really do a lot. I wish regards to sports, you know, uh-huh. my team. Right. And that was pretty much the sports. Uh-huh. Um, until I came to America in 77, and my dad bought me a basketball. It was a Vanderbilt project. And wow. I had a little, I don't know if you remember the basketball, you used to have like a little ball on the inside of the basketball. Every time you dribble, you go, ping, and you can hit a ball, the little, yes. inside the ball, dribbling around. Yes. And that was my first basketball. Um, it got stolen at the park, and we took it from me. Man. Uh, I, was, you know, I was probably in the age or something like that. My brother came and got it back, but typically I was just, you know, I was just outside recreation, you know, junk, you know, the, the monkey bars. And yep. Things, uh, um, I wasn't really a sports guy, per se, just, you know, just staying kind of active, but I wasn't really into sports. You know, your parents say, like, now, you know, they weren't home all the time to teach you to different sports and then sort of sign you up for different stuff. And, mm-hmm. You know, you just, like, you go outside and whatever you, you know, bump into or run into, but you did. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> So, so you didn't have like any role models, so who like, okay, girlfriend, let me take you under my wing, man. This is ball. This is how we, you know, nothing. Not until, not until I was about twelve. I want to say I was about twelve. So mm-hmm. maybe going to thirteen. I was in Casino Boulevard, by, down there by Queens College. Um, I was just out there shooting one day, and a guy walks up to me, He's like, "Hey, man, you play basketball?" And I was like, uh, "Yeah, I guess." <laughs> Right. He's like, man, you should really start playing. I was like, oh, okay. He's like, you gonna be here tomorrow? He go, I go, I guess. <laughs> so, well, you come here tomorrow. I'm gonna come get you now. Well, right. Like, I'm gonna come get you, and I'm gonna take you to this gym to go play. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so that guy ended up being Dave Edwards. Uh, Super Dave. There. Super Dave Edwards. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right, that Davis, yes, okay, yes, okay. Yes, that Davis, that Davis was from uh, Riverside, so it's from Gallows, anyway, dark right. skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, so he picks me up, the next day we get on the train, and I, hey, I might just met this dude the day before. Right. So we get, we get on the train, and we take it from Queens and switch trains and go back and forth. We go up to 135th and uh, Park Avenue, uh, one of them. Uh-huh. He takes me to the Gallows Gym to the little small. Uh, in elementary school, just 
Right. And I was walking in, I was just like, it was, it was everywhere. And when we got there, it was like the older group was playing, you know, Rod stripping and those guys. Obviously, I didn't know who they were. Yeah. I just knew they'd take a play. Yeah. And I had no business being there, so this dude was just playing. <laughs> Yeah. You know, just, just out there doing it. And here I am. I just started building the ball about two weeks ago. And they bring me in. So anyway, that gym was being cleared out. They just finished their practice. And now I guess wherever he wanted me to be at. Uh-huh. Uh, with what we were just about to practice. I can't remember how anything went mm-hmm. so long ago. Yeah. I just know that I was with them. And, you know, I'm probably, I'm sure I look like straight crack. <laughs> Yeah. I do, I do, yes. They have big Jason. I can't remember Jason's last name. He's probably about six eight. Played in Truman, played a couple different schools. He's from from down, he's from all of them. You know, all the guys was just you know, grinding, you know, they was speaking and playing ball. Yes, that's it, yep. So, you know, we did that and you know, Dave Lud, you know, Dave was great was a great coach. Yeah. And you know, like I said, he picked me up all the time and we just I just stuck with it for a while until, you know, I switched over. Yeah. What? So, so you played with Arnold Bernard? Did you play with uh, what's my man, uh, Jamal Walker too? Not it was it you who went to Hayes? So Jamal Walker played Jamal. You talking about Mashburn? So Jamal. So Jamal mm-hmm. Mashburn was obviously they were a much better team than I was. I wasn't nowhere there. Right. Right. At that age, I was just still learning how to chew gum, chew the ball, and walk at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, Right. I don't know about drop step. I don't know anything. They, they're teaching you from scratch. Mm. Uh, so, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of learning, a lot of being yelled at, which was, you know, my, whatever. my mom yelled at me all the time, so I'm going to scare her. <laughs> Damn, any coach. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so anyway, so I end up, uh, you know, I just end up being good enough to get on the B team. I have no idea who the B team would be, but I do mm. always play behind the A team, which was, you know, Yoda, mm-hmm. um, and those guys. Right. So I didn't stay long enough. I was there like a year. I didn't stay long enough to get to know guys. Right, right. I was never able to know who they were. I was just, listen, all these guys are good. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I knew. Right, right. And then you switched over to Riverside Church, the arch rival. You switched over to the arch rivals. How'd you get out of that, man? Citywide, uh, yep, Brandeis height. Oh yeah, I remember those days. This, this is winter, so you played inside. Yes. So you play outside. Right. So we're playing and uh you know, I was just so excited the first time my dad see me play. Mm-hmm. I've been with Gas was not about a good beat in that month. And I recall just getting the ball at the three point line, never dribbled, just ran to the basket and tried to dunk the ball and it popped all the way back out the half court. <laughs> Coach Dave stuff, yeah, not Dave Edwards, Coach Dave the head. Right. Mm-hmm. One day I had a game after Galveston, with Galveston, 
and he had a game with that. The game I went to his locker room, mm -hmm. and he was like, Coach, this is, you know, Coach Lloyd, this is my friend Dom. Uh, you know, he wants to come over and play with us. And he looked at me, he's like, oh, okay, come back, come off on Tuesday, and we're going to have uh, this funny coach, all the coaches are named Dave. The other Dave Edwards, Coach Dave Edwards, worked out to him. I mean, for real time, like, you know, come on up. Right. So I went, I went on up, and, you know, obviously, you know, Riverside Church is that small. Yep. You know, Yes. Yep. I remember. The ball would hit the basket and go stop and he had to climb up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I went there. My first practice was watching this Malik. Malik Sealy. Mm -hmm. Gordon Winchester. Yes. You know, uh, Jerome Holmes. You know, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, Kenny. I mean, they, you know, the A team was in there. They were balling. Mm hmm. Right, so right. So I came in, I went on the B team, was with a lot of guys from Block, Bishop Block in the high school, uh, Carlos Easterling as well. Yes. And, you know, so we, you know, Anton, Deshaun, uh, played at, uh, on, um, we played at uh, Bishop Block. So, you know, I'm mm -hmm. starting to get, you know, more confidence with those guys. But we were all trying to help each other out. Our right. Our objective was trying to get to the A team. Right, um, yeah, that was the objective. Yeah. This one in one of your um, posts that you have is like that fame picture that you had, like you won a championship with Riverside. I think it was Malik, it was Chuck Martin, it was a whole lot of dudes, and and then Patrick Alphonse, all those cats was in there. Peace. Syracuse. Yep. So that's my three point guards in rotation. 
the however they go. Right. Uh, Mike Martin was a backup, so all three of them, whenever uh, whoever was playing, right. he went to Cornell. So it's Division One all the way, right? Then now shooting guard was Chuck Chuck uh, Chuck Chuck uh, Martin. Chuck Martin, yep. Coach and head assistant now at uh, South Carolina. Yep. And he uh he went to uh I wanna say Maris, but you know, another division one school. Yeah, definitely. Yep, then Drexel. Yep. Yeah, he's supposed to go to Manhattan. That's another story at another time. Yep. <laughs> yep. help you like for your high school career especially like Christ the King and our Savior Lutheran It was, it was the best in the country, yeah. Every, every school you went to. Because, yep. You know, the, the top three players went D1. I'm talking high man's D1. Absolutely. You know, Tyler Tyler, that whole seven went to D1. <laughs> yep, uh-huh. All oh, hollows. Oh, yep. You were thinking that, you know, so I went there for one year. Uh, obviously, it was a big um, transition for me or culture shock for me. Because, you know, now, now, you know, back then I had like a little fish in here. I had to shave. I never shaved a day in my life. What? <laughs> Yeah. And Danny 
Toronto. Danny Toronto, that's right. Yeah, okay. I know, right? I know. It's absolutely so crazy. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about a school in the Bronx uh, that had probably 500 people from, you know, kindergarten through high school through 12, mm -hmm. all in one building with two floors and one little gym. And they had all these big guys walking around that place. <laughs> Man, so I, I know. So you won a, you won a state championship with, in 87, right? So talk to me about that experience, man. How was that? How was that run? So you know what? It was it was great. It was it was great. But at the same time, you know, like when you look back on it, you didn't really live the experience like you would. You just played the game. Yeah. You know, we just wanted to compete. And that year, we only lost one game. Wow. And we lost to Stevenson. Mm. Stevenson had a big. Uh, oh my God! Why do I have such a hard time remembering they, they have first of all the Michael Huber. Mm -hmm. was a senior point guard who's the, he's the head coach now at Bowling Green. Wow. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he also played at Bowling Green. Uh -huh. uh, they had, uh, what's my guy named that runs, uh, uh, runs Gauchos now, light skin, Billy Singleton. Billy Singleton, yeah. that's right. Who played at St. John's, yep. Mm -hmm. So our little private school with the 500 kids total went up to Stevenson, you know, over there in Stevenson Commons. Ooh. You know, was in the best of neighborhoods. Right. You know, That's right, um, David Kane. Um, yep. David Kane was there, uh, and they just, you know, they 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 handled the environment well. And, mm -hmm. You know, they beat us by probably about by like ten. They smacked us and talked smack to us. Mm. And, and it's funny. I talked to Michael Huber last week, and every time we have a conversation, <laughs> he brings that up. He brings up that game. <laughs> and we talk about thirty some years later. He still brings up that game, like yeah, you know, you were only lost. Wow. Uh, it would be the good team to beat Malloy. That's Mm -hmm. um, he was, you know, beat his school. We beat up uh, uh, Talentine. We beat them. Mm -hmm. We beat uh, uh, we beat Malloy in the state in the state uh, uh, quarterfinals. We beat Grady. Uh, wow. We beat, you know, we beat some really really good schools. Uh, once we beat we got some to toward the toward the playoffs, the state finals. Yeah. So w were you a senior during that time, Garfield? Or, was a you was a junior. Okay. So talk yeah. to me about that next year, your senior year. Talk to me about um. You know, who was looking at you? or any schools looking at you? Or what, what was the process with that? So, you know, like I said, I didn't know, really know much about basketball. Right. Well, so I was just playing. Yep. I didn't know anything about, you know, college scholarships as far as that go until, mm -hmm. you know, my junior year with Malik and those guys. And I started seeing those guys get letters and, you know, get yep. information coaches. Uh, most of those stuff was funneled through Mr. Lodge. Yep. You know, Mr. Lodge just told everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, Mr. Lodge took care of his people. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say about me, I didn't take academic seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to play. I did the bare minimum yeah. uh, to get it. And then my junior year, after my junior year, I had issues that I was saving Luther in regards to my behavior, not academics. Mm -hmm. And my parents were like, hey, listen, you know what? You need to get out of Catholic school. Mm -hmm. You just come come and go to a regular high school. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't deserve to be in a Catholic high school. So I'm like, hey, you know, they, they're going to give me a scholarship. To play college basketball, my dad's like, hey, you ain't got the grades for no college or fucking no scholarships or whatever. And he obviously he don't know anything in regards to athletic scholarships. Right. He just no academic scholarships. Right, so, right. So, so he started getting calls to the house uh, from college coaches. So by this time, you know, I had a couple of looks, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing major. Um, and then my senior year, I transferred to Advantage Child High School, which was my local oh, okay. school that I was. Uh, that I was uh, living in, you know, mm -hmm. or, uh, was, you know, sold to. Right. So I was trying to play for them, but because I transferred, they made me sit out. Oh, so my man. senior year, I didn't play high school basketball. I played with uh, Terps. Riverside, yeah, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was like the basketball stuff. Like it was a whole bunch of misfits. Mm -hmm. You know, like, <laughs> all, the, all the misbehaved high school 17-year-olds that played ball that was pretty good were all in one game. Right. So I'm going to to traveling and guys are stealing out of stores. <laughs> I mean, you know, we were here to play the tournament. You know, we hockey jerseys was big back then. Right. You know, guys are stealing hockey jerseys. Yeah. Like, yeah we don't go to jail. <laughs> so, you know, we were, we were a misfit, but, you know, Mr. Lurch always, you know, that's 
about never talk bad about the sports ever. Yeah. Yeah. He always, you know, you know, I can't speak on any other guys or what happened with them. I'm just speaking of my relationship. Right. Uh, with them. He always took care of me. Mm-hmm. You know, he mm-hmm. always, you know, looked out for me. And I, I always find that surprising because he never did anything with me. I never had an issue with him. Yeah. But I wasn't the best. I wasn't, a, you know, I wasn't his top player. Right. You know, but he, but he always treated me like, like I was. I think it was just my grit. You know, like I wasn't scared of nobody and yep. you know, whatever, whatever. I remember. So he, uh, he's like, hey, you, you gonna play college ball? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you, know you know, whatever. You know, so he's like, I'm gonna send you to Juco. You're gonna go there for two years, get your grades together. Uh-huh. You know, this, we're talking Prop 48. Right. This time. Yeah. So you, gotta, you, can, you can go to Division One and sit out of here mm-hmm. and then play your second year, which is uh, like Ross Strickland and those guys were about the first guys to do it. Yeah. Or you can just go to Juco. And just get your grades together and then go into, you know, get your basketball together. So I still need a little grooming basketball wise and also academic wise. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, what are you said to me? And the fact that everyone's going to a school left upstate New York called Trinity Valley or something like that. Yeah. But right. Guys that went, they were like some bad kids. Like, yep. Some, bad boys. some behavior like, issues. Yeah. Yep. So they only last like a year or so. So anyway, he said, uh, I'm going to say you can't. It's like, Kansas. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, you gonna love it. So, oh, okay, cool. So I went to Kansas, and it was it was it wasn't the, the best thing, but it was the best thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got away. I was away for like a, maybe about a month, and I told my parents like I need to come back home. Mm. My parents like you ain't coming back nowhere. You staying right? You staying? Yep. Stick it out. You ain't going nowhere. And I was like, Mom, I need to come back. They're like, Don't you stay there? So I stayed there, and my first year, I ended up getting like a three point eight seven. I had nothing else to do. Right. Uh, academic, I was an academic honor roll. So then I really sat down and started getting work together. My mm. basketball was taking care of itself. Like I was, you know, I worked a lot. I, mm-hmm. you know, I always, I, I was in my work. I get up at six in the morning. The gym was always open for us. Wow. You know, we always had a key. So I would go shoot, mm-hmm. work on my game, and work on my game, play, play. And over time, it just got better. And, you know, by then, now colleges are starting to come down. Mm. You know, now you're at the Midwest. Yep. You get a lot of Big Ten schools, Big 12 schools. Uh, things like that looking at you. So, you know, I have like a lot of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, mm. you know, a little bit of Kansas, you know, stuff like that. Right. And, you know, the only thing I have to do about basketball is Big East. I didn't even know there was any other conference. <laughs> right. Big East because that's all. You that's know, all you knew. Yeah. That's all the thing on TV is you want to go to Georgetown, you want to go to Syracuse, yep. or you want to go to St. John's. Uh huh. That's so, it. So, you know, by, uh, by this time, St. Just, just, uh, Hall just lost in the state in the uh, championship against Michigan. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now they're bringing me down. Gordon Winchester's there. Malik is at St. John's. Yep. Conrad is on his way to Syracuse. Syracuse but Turkey never really recruited me. Mm-hmm. Georgia Tech liked me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at this point, I had a little bit of options. Never heard of Maryland. Really? Never heard of Maryland? <laughs> never even heard of Maryland. Now, I, I knew of Glenn Bond because he had died. Right. Uh, um, but I didn't, the only thing I knew about the ACC, and I didn't even know until after the fact, was when I watched Blue Bill and Duke playing the national championship when Burp Zelson was a freshman. Yes. So that, that's about all I knew about anything. So uh-huh. anyway, long story short, uh, you know, my junior college coach was like, hey, you know, uh, Maryland wants to recruit you. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. So I went on a couple of visits. See, the uh, Dino Hall wanted me to come in a visit. Uh-huh. Uh, PJ Paul, listen. Carlos Lowe will come down every once a month. Mm-hmm. He'll visit me like, oh, I need you to reunite you with your best friend, Gordon Winchester. Mm-hmm. But, which I'd have loved to do, and but that's what I wanted to do was go back. Right. But you know, then you got to think about playing time. Me and my best friend are going to be playing against each other. Wow. Uh, competing for the same time. That might be an issue. And, <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't. You know what? At this point, I always had Gordy ahead of me as a better player. Mm-hmm. You know, he jumped, he jumped higher. He was smoother. Yeah. Smooth yeah. You know, he was one of the first guys that I see dunk the ball without touching the basket. Yeah, and yeah. He was going without grabbing her. Like, he had money. He didn't have pops. He had money. <laughs> so, so he, you, know, and then, you know, I just thought, you know, because, you know, those guys were already way ahead of me before I started. Mm-hmm. So I always kept them ahead of me, you know, Malik and all those guys. So I never thought that I'd be able to compete with those guys. You know, we played and we had, you know, good battles, but always thinking they like, you know, those guys are way better than I was. So, mm-hmm. You know, I thought about it, thought about it, one of the recruit trips to Maryland. Okay. And when I said, man, 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 did I fall in love. <laughs> so you fell in love with the school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. I went 
there, they picked me up, flew me in, put me in the Marriott, uh, told me, first time I made shrimp, I, that I could recall anyway. Right. And they were like, hey, when you're hungry, just order room service. You know, whatever you want, just put it on the room service. Uh -huh. And I was in the store ordering sweats. <laughs> That's right, uh, yep. They had Ted, Ted Jeffrey. Uh huh. In the middle. Uh, Maryland had uh, Gerard Moussop. That's right. Uh, we played, played for the Knicks for a little bit, yep. Uh, Tony Masterberg played 50 years in NBA in about 19, got a ring with the Spurs. Yep. Uh, um, well, Walt Williams. Was, the, uh, the Wizards was there? Wow, okay. Wizard was a freshman at this point. I was Ooh. joking. No, sophomore. Right. He was a sophomore, 6'9 point guard, lanky. Yep. Or High socks, yep. Uh, the DC, that's a DC thing, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, you know, he, uh, so I went, and so I'm sitting in the tunnel. They had cold fields, it's at cold field house, you know. Mm -hmm. It's on campus stadium. Yep. 15,500. This is three hours before the game. The game, the student section is packed. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm standing in the tunnel, and they're screaming, God, God, God. <laughs> this is my first visit. This is my first This is your first college visit, first Maryland. Visit. He just sent you there, okay. He, he sent me, put some money in my pocket, bought me like a 32 inch TV, put that on the plane, and then I got a white beef pickup. And listen, a white beef pickup at the airport with it in a pickup truck. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was, like, I didn't have options. It's like, oh, right. That. right. So, Maryland was like the first time someone really showed me love, like, yeah. you know, college stuff. Yeah. So, so I was there, I got on, I can remember to this day, I had on the from Boston College, right? Yes. Yes. So he played, so Gary Williams was the head coach. Mm -hmm. He played for Gary Williams at Boston College. Yeah. Now Gary Williams is at left Ohio State. He came to Maryland. Mm -hmm. This is his first year at Maryland. And Rod McCready is assistant coach. Wow. So so anyway, so Rod McCready recruited me, and he's like, hey, you're not going to acknowledge the coach, the crowd, they're calling you. I go, they ain't calling me. He knows I'm here. <laughs> when I look up, they have my name on the Jumbotron, and the crowd is pretty calm. Calm, baby. He's like, Everyone knows you're here. I go, me? <laughs> so he like waves to the crowd. So I kind of put my hand up a little bit. Right. And they start yelling a little loud. I went higher and loud. And I'm by this time, I'm like, <laughs> and they're screaming, they're screaming. And I'm just like, they mean he left me. I'm sweating like me. Right. I'm just like, right. I'm, like, I'm overjoyed. Uh -huh. So the game comes on. They're playing. Wall catches dunks. He dunks on people at alley -oop. You know, we have a backdoor play that we run. He catches it. You know, they, they win on senior night. Mm. Uh, and that night, after the game was over, Gary talks to me and he's like, you know, you know, I know you have a few more visits you got to go look at. Um, I was like, look at him. I'll come in today. Really? <laughs> he's like, no, 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 you can't come in today. I was like, shoot, why not? He's like, I was like, man, I love this place. He's like, but you haven't been to any other schools. I go, it's okay. Right. I'll be all right right here. So he's like, hey, listen, we're going to be, we're, you know, we're going to be on probation. We don't know what our sanctions going to be, and it won't be until Tuesday. He's like, if you want on Tuesday after you hear our probation, whatever the NCAA sanctions us, mm -hmm. then 
I'll accept it. So I was like, all right, I'll call you Tuesday. <laughs> so back up before Gary got there, this was his first year. He finished up uh -huh. with Bob Wade. Right. Bob Wade was the black coach out of Baltimore, Coach Sam Cassell, Dave Whitgate. Yeah. Uh, you know, Reggie Williams. Team. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Baltimore Dunbar. Yep, Muggsy Boggs, Coach Muggsy Boggs, all those guys, yeah. yeah. Yep. So anyway, so he got the he got one left. He Drizel left after the whole Len Bias yeah. uh, situation. They gave it to Bob Wade. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob Wade went from running a high school program, probably managing five to ten thousand dollars, to now here in Maryland mm -hmm. managing millions of dollars. Yep. On top of the fact that he's a black guy, yeah. that's coaching his first major black coach in the ACC. Right. And no one really wanted him there. So half the village of Maryland campus is, is you know, named after, you know, white supremacists and so that obviously we knew that back then, but Yeah, right, you know, sure. He, he didn't get a lot of support. Yeah. So he got set up a lot and you know, you know, he didn't know better, he was giving everybody a car, everybody driving cars. <laughs> <laughs> you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> yep. So I, you know, I graduated from JUCO uh, with a, like a 3.8. Wow. Um, on the road. Yep. I left. I left Maryland, and I, I mean, to Maryland. I left Coffeyville, Kansas, and I literally left from there, and I went right to Maryland. Wow. I didn't go back to the, to the Bronx. I went right to Maryland. Um, you know, I wanted to get. To, I wanted to get to work. I wanted to get better. You know, yeah. This guy named Paul Williams, who uh, who was the star, who was the man. Yes. And by this point. I was a Juke All American. I was like 20, 20 something points a game. Mm -hmm. You know, I was one of the top players in the country in Juco. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the only, the only other monster out there really was uh, Larry Johnson. Oh, Texas. yes, yes, from San Jack. Yep, uh huh. I just, kept, I just kept hearing about this 6 8 guy who could, you know, who just destroy his rims and, and <laughs> put his smear in people. And, uh, they also had San Jacinto Junior College in Texas. Yep. San Cassell and those guys were out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those, those things right there. So, anyway, um, I went to Maryland. Mm -hmm. Maryland gave me a summer job. Like, you can live in the dorms, you can work at Fannie Mae, uh, and they can, you know, make money over the summer while you train. Yeah. You know, went and went to Herbal Coalition, played in the summer league, and just kept, you know, just trying to work on my craft to, mm -hmm. you know, just to get better, and, you know, because I wanted to play. I didn't want to come all the way here right. and sit on the fence. And right. One of the first things when they recruited me was like, hey, when I come there, am I going to start? And they're like, listen, if you can't beat that, the guy in front of you, then you probably shouldn't be coming. Mm. I'm like, well, say, say no more. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> yep. So uh, there was a guy in front of me named Evans Burns. He was a, a sophomore. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, you know, about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, could score the ball, but obviously he was a little, you know, chunky guy, couldn't mm. play no more than four minutes at a time before he had to be subbed out. Wow. Um, Wall was the man. Yep. Uh, you know, no question about it. Gerard Bustoff left and went to the went turn pro. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Massenburg was a senior, so he's gone. So now it's just Walt. Um, and then whoever Matt Rowe transferred in, he was he sat out the first year mm -hmm. uh, before I got there. That's right. From Syracuse. from Syracuse. Yep. Shooter. So he's a shooter. Yep. Let, let's let's it fly. So we got Walt at the point six eight point guard. He at the two. I'm at the three slash four. We got Cedric Lewis, who was the second. Second shot block in the country behind Shaq, averaged about 2.9 shot block per game. Mm -hmm. Brother is Derek Lewis, who was like six five, yeah. six and he was number one shot block in the country. Yep. Uh, before him at Maryland. I remember that. Yeah. Man. So, so yeah, man, that's big. yeah, that's major. So how how did you uh? So I know you said you you started like from day one there, right? For at Maryland, right? Yep. So listen, I went Ooh. there. I went there with my New York kid. Right. <laughs> By this point, I had gained confidence. Yep. You know, from battling with Malik and all those guys in Gordy and et cetera, and working on my craft and Juco, having a lot of success in Juco, mm -hmm. uh, putting a lot of time in the gym. By the time I got to Maryland, I had developed a, 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 a nice deep jumper. Mm -hmm. Previous to that, I was, you know, I was inside and out for the foul line about 15 feet out. I was plenty, but anything past that, I never really went. Right. Um, before I expanded my game. 
you know, I jumped a little bit. I, you know, I got a little bigger, a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a lot of confidence. I had a lot of swag. I had a lot of swag. Yeah, yeah. So Definitely. I went to Maryland, and my whole objective was just to walk fast. <laughs> like, I wanted to man. That was it. You know, I, right. And then, you know, I, uh, you know, the other part about being from New York is I didn't study other players. Like, I just thought I was the, the man, and mm -hmm. everybody else ain't, you know, ain't up to it, so I don't need to worry about nobody else. Right. <laughs> you know, the wall was, was a different animal. Like, yeah, he was. He was. Hey. He was yeah he, yeah, he, yeah, he definitely, he definitely was, man. Hey, Garfield, did you, did you pattern your game after anybody in particular, like in the college or the pro ranks when you were, you know, when you were coming up? You know, I did mm -hmm. because I just didn't know no better. I didn't watch a lot of ball. Right. I, didn't watch a lot. I just played. Right. You know, you know, I just, I just played and competed and tried to, you know, do what I could do mm -hmm. while I was there. So you know, there was no one. I didn't really watch anyone to say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna be like this guy. I just. I was just trying to make sure I can get Malik Miss, get the rebound and put it back in. There you go. Gordon and Miss, get, get the shot. And yeah. they want to play for me, do the best you can to make sure you score. Yeah. And, you know, just from playing with those, you know, just playing with those guys and learning how to maneuver to score with those guys and stuff like that is what taught me the game. Yeah. You know, just, just competing with them, them guys. And, you know, the other thing was we traveled everywhere together. So we went from park to park to park yep. with our own five. And just learn how to play with them and playing against other people and having success against other people gave you confidence yep. that you probably even could have had. And that kind of just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. Yeah, so you had that you had that competitive that, that competitive gene in you from from the jump, you know, for the success. Yeah. Man, hey, you know, yeah. those guys those guys are the one that put it in me because I didn't have the initials. Right. So I didn't really think I belong. Mm -hmm. Those guys was you know, those guys was playing and yeah. they had it. Yeah. And I was like, Wow, oh, <laughs> you know, I, I was just trying to, you know, just trying to survive. And those guys over time, right. you know, the friendship, the camaraderie, and not want to let each other down, and yep. having success kind of just breeds, breeds an animal in you. So when yeah. I went to Berlin, you know, that whole from end of May to first day of classes in August, we were just competing against each other every day. Yeah, and I want to be, you know, I want to be the first, you know, the quickest I could be in running drills. I want to be quick as I could be in, in, in condition and mm -hmm. lifting, you know, all those mm -hmm. things. Every single thing was like work, then back to the gym, work, then back to the gym. Yeah. And it eventually pays off. And, you know, when you're around guys with like mine, you know, you, you can only, only get better. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So what were some highlights that you had at Maryland? You know, like, go, did you guys went to the tournament and stuff like that? And uh... No, we didn't go to the tournament okay. because we qualified because we were on sanctions. Right. Uh, But we never finished no more than, you know, middle. Yes, uh, in the ACC. Back, yeah, that's yeah, that's major. Was, you know, this is 10 teams and now. So let me back up. So uh, obviously I had to work about getting my starting position. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play. So, you know, we competed. You know, I, I heard that. I got that. That You know, that, that took care of itself. Yeah. So I, my first game was against, you know, Bump team. Probably had like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. My second game, I dropped 18. Mm. Um, third game we played USC, Harold Miner. Oh, uh, baby Jordan. <laughs> baby Jordan at, at, at Maryland. Uh -huh. This is about my third game, and I killed him. I missed a shot the whole game. I was 10 for 10. Whoa. From like 20, 24 points. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I still hold that record to this day, though. You know, the most perfect. Wow. Games, shooting at least 10 shots. Uh, Man. So, you know, I, I was rolling. You know, mm -hmm. we were. Mm -hmm. Was our leader, but for the first three games of the season, I was the leading scorer. Wow! Then he eventually, then he eventually took over. You know, yeah. Walt, the Walt's the first round lottery pick. Oh yeah, he's a beast. Sacramento King. Yep. Uh, so you know, so we we we, we had a history. You know, we were cocky. You know, we we really felt like we were a whole lot better than yeah. people thought we were. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we go to uh, Virginia, beat them. My my highest game I see my junior year, I dropped thirty two against Virginia Tech. Wow. Um, at, Virginia, at Virginia Tech, I mean, I was just a scorer. Yeah. I, I just, I just put the ball in the paint. Yep. I mean, the ball in the bucket. I remember my first time I played point. Uh, we were playing <laughs> Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech, and they had Andy Geiger. Oh yeah, the big they, kid. Yes. He played, played with the Sixers for a while. Yep. And they put him on the. You know, I, I had handle. I was throwing through your legs. You know, I was cocky. But, yep. Uh, you know all those things, and you know that game was like a coming out for me as far as just. Being able to show them that I can 
you know, score from the perimeter and, and mm-hmm. create my own moves from out that way. Uh-huh. Before that, it was like inside, you know, little, you know, undersized guy would just be able to get to where he wanted to get. Right. Uh, so, you know, by this point, it was just like, okay, this guy can really open up the floor for us and create a lot of things. So between me and Walt, you know, we stress a lot of, uh, stress a lot of defense. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the ACC, let me explain something, the ACC. So, this is 1990, right? So right. So, you got North Carolina State. Every team had a squad. North Carolina State had Rodney Monroe. Yep. Right? Corciani, too, right? Probably. Corciani. Yep. Ugliata. Ugliata. Played, played the Wizards. Yep. Right? And they had, like, another, they had, like, two other big kids. Georgia Tech, three amigos. Dennis, Dennis Scott. Andy Anderson, yeah. Ryan Oliver. Yep, Lethal Andy Weapon Andy 3. Geiger. Yep. <laughs> yep, and Andy Geiger. And then they had, uh, you know, what's the guy that used to play in the NBA? Had like two, uh, had like four sons. That's oh, uh, Barry. Yep, Barry. Yep, Noodles Barry. Yep. He had two of his sons there. <laughs> uh, let's see, Virginia had, you know, uh, Brian Stiff who played in the NBA. Yep. Yep. So yep. Uh, Crotty. Uh, Corey Alexander came in after him. Yeah. Uh, who else? North Carolina had... Uh, Rick Fox. Uh, what's my guy played with the uh, Davis? Who's the head coach now at North Carolina? Hubert Davis, yep. King uh, Rice. David, King Rice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Reese came in as a freshman. Yep. Uh, from Tyler Time. Yep. Uh, New York City. I mean, every team in the ACC was stacked. Stacked. Stacked to the rim. So there was no, there was no cupcake game. You know, you were, you were, you came out to play. Yep. Uh, you know, we played Louisville at Louisville. Uh, with, uh, what's my name, Smith, uh, that Le- played with, uh, the Wizards. LeBradford Smith, LeBradford Smith. Smith, yep. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we was going everywhere, man. I mean, it, it was, it was awesome. Duke, Duke had Ala Dubanabi, Ala Bobby. Ala Bobby. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, Ala Bobby, Christian Leitner, Ryan Davis. Wow. Uh, Bobby Hurley. Yep. Uh, I mean, they, just a whole squad. with Turkey Parks. Yep. So we mm-hmm. always came out with, with 500 with him. But Gary Williams was just a great coach. You know, he yeah. really motivated you. He really, you know, really got into it. So, yeah. you know, we, I love I my time in Maryland. Yeah, and I'm sure you were happy when they won the national championship with Dixon and Gary Williams, you know, on the, on the you know, on the I court. was ecstatic. I mm-hmm. actually recruited, uh, I was down here, so I came to Florida in 96, and I saw um, Steve, uh, Steve Blake. Steve Blake, yes. And he was down here playing. So I called Dave Dickerson, who at the time, Dave Dickerson, when I came to Maryland, he was the guy who showed me around and mm-hmm. drove me around for the summer. Uh, he was like my mentor, big brother. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, so I called him. He was the assistant coach now in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, this is point guard now. And it's pretty nice. And they recruited him from there. And, you know, it's all history after that. Yeah, man. That is cool. Hey, so talk to me a little bit. Um, and again, if, if everybody's joining us here on Transition Tuesdays, we got my man Garfield Smith here joining us here today as a special guest. So, Garfield, talk to me about, I know you played, because you played ball in Turkey for a while after college. So, talk to me about how that transition was from being a college athlete to, to being a professional basketball player. How was that transition for you? Um, so, I mean, it was, it was culture shock. First of all, mm-hmm. let me say, so I had a great junior year, mm-hmm. great junior year, Bob Gibbons. Had a uh, Bob Gibbs used to be a big recruiter. Oh yeah. He, was, he compiled a list of like top two hundred and fifty ball players that should be you know pro prospects, mm-hmm. and he was you know giving to the pro. So I was on that list mm-hmm. from my from my junior year going in. So into my senior year, I'm having a great start, playing really really well. I'm solid. Uh, Wall is is playing well. We're all playing well, and I played Florida State. Mm-hmm. Florida State had Sam Cassell, Charlie uh, Ward. Ward Yep. Uh-huh. Bob Sora. Yep. Uh, Doug Edwards. Like their whole start five went it went broke. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, their whole start five went first round. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm playing. We're at Cold Field, and San Francisco, uh, one of my teammates run into me, and I end up fracturing my uh, like my top of my leg. Ooh. The part of the uh huh. Uh, so this is the middle of the season. Yeah. And I'm done. You know, I'm done. I'm out for two months. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we're playing a delayed CBS uh, at the time. Uh-huh. So I'm done. And, you know, I'm, by now it's mid-season, so it's February or so. 
obviously we're not going to the tournament, but we're playing the ACC tournament. Right. We can't play in the NCAA tournament. Right. Uh, so I'm done. I take my career over in regards to playing. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm not going to be able to go any draft uh, workouts, anything of that nature. So I think my, you know, career is done. So probably three months after my injury, I start playing back again. I'm playing, just mm-hmm. playing pickup. Mm-hmm. And an agent, Len Elmore, uh, came to me and was just like, Len Elmore obviously was a Maryland great. Maryland great. Yeah. Played with the Celtics, played with John Lucas and those mm-hmm. guys. And he, this was his first year to be an agent. He started just starting out to be an agent. Previous to that, he started to be a lawyer. He was a lawyer. Right. So he uh, was like, hey, man, you know, uh, I got Walt Williams signed with me. Um, I got, you know, Brian Davis who played at Duke sign with me, you know, the defensive stopper, mm-hmm. and I want you to meet my third client, and I was like, okay, I don't know, <laughs> right, you know like, you know, but at this point, I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to the NBA, right. and I'm, you know, overseas was a foreign object, especially back then, sure, I like, I can't be overseas, what, so anyway, so I'm playing one day, and he comes to the gym, you know, like, hey man, I got a, got a job for you, I was like, oh, where? yeah, yeah, they're going to pay you well, uh, you're going to go overseas, I go, Overseas, where am I going? He's like, Turkey. I go, Turkey? Where the hell is Turkey? <laughs> where the hell is that? Right. Like, How long is that flight? Right. And I hate flying. And I hate flying. Uh-huh. He's like, don't worry about what I did. Come off tomorrow. We're going to have a call with the team and that and that. So I did everything to sabotage the application. <laughs> uh, did you really? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I was supposed to go get my passport because I never had a passport. Right. Like, you got to beat me down in D.C. On Friday, we gotta go to the passport office to get a passport. I didn't show up. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I had a fake call with the team. It was like I was like, oh, I missed the call. You know, back then it was not like everybody had cell phones. You were, you know, you had to be in an office and you know, yep. a landline. Right. You know, the calls. Yep. So anyway, long story short, they end up getting it together, and I was like, well, if I'm gonna go, they gotta pay me. Uh, I gotta get half up front. Mm-hmm. They're like, what? Yeah, they gotta get half up front. Like I'm trying to sabotage. Right. You just yeah. <laughs> transition to do other things so i got two more questions for you golfer man before i let you go man first one is i want to talk about you know what you're doing now i know you you're involved with discipline and which is ironic right because it's coming from a person like right isn't that ironic now what you do now huh listen i tell them all the time like listen man you think you bad you ain't got that man you just what i was doing you ain't got anything and the good thing about me i ain't getting caught y'all getting caught here Right, can't even do it right, right? <laughs> can't even do it right. Oh that's man. Ironic. So you know, but you know, I think the thing with me was I, I was I was a lost hole. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? When I say that, meaning 
you know, I still have mom and dad at home. Yeah. You know, my dad worked hard every day. He left the house at four thirty in the morning to go work construction. Had a great job. My parents, my mom worked, you know, cleaning hotels, motels. Mm. By Yankee Stadium, that there's a hotel by Yankee Stadium called Yankee Motel or something like that. Oh, I know, I know that one. Yeah. <laughs> my mom, that's where my mom started working. They worked here, and so they were, you know, they were they were working parents. Sure. You know, just trying to you trying to provide for the family. I have five sisters. Wow. Um, you know, and so. You know, I didn't have a lot of guidance at home. You know, right. and, and, and on top of that, I wasn't from New York. I'm from Jamaica. You know, yeah. I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still just grumbled about being here because I didn't want to be. I wanted to be in Jamaica. That's where I knew all my life. And, right. You know, poor, poor y'all because I wasn't even raised a child. It was with my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. That's who mom and dad is to me. And now I'm here with y'all. And I'm really just meeting y'all, really. I mean, I've only seen y'all once or twice in my life. So I'm I've been. I was disgruntled for a whole life, so my relationship wasn't great with my mom. Yeah. My relationship was great with my dad. Right. But you know, so I, I, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of issues. I had a lot of bent up things inside me, which mm. made me act out a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know, but because I was with around, I was around solid people. They were, you know, they kind of overlooked all my rough edges. They just kept working with me. You mm -hmm. know, like Vince Smith, I mean, left right city. You know, Kenny Smith. Uh, sure. Uh, you yep. Know, uh, he, Pierre Turner, just Pierre Turner, you know, like all those guys who, you know, just like work with me and, you know, stayed on me and, mm -hmm. you know, whenever I messed up, you know, they just kind of took me in and, you know, talked to me and, and worked through things. Mr. Lord was another, he's just like, hey, man, cut the crap, dog, da 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 You know, if I came in and say, hey, he gave him the worst story ever, I need $200, he gave it to me. I'm like, you can need that story. <laughs> you know, so, you know we, 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 I just had, I literally had solid people around me. Right. That just, like, listen, I don't care how much you try to sabotage yourself, we're going to keep pushing you down these tracks. You're going you gonna to get to where you're going, you know, one way or another. And so when I do my job now, that's how I tell people, like, listen, man, my job is to get you to your next chapter of life. And hopefully at some point over the next, you know, future, you know, four or five years, you figure out what it is you want to do in life. And you just take that stride and keep going. But you can look back and say, yeah, I could, it could have been bad, but, you know, somebody was there to, yeah, now and now you there for those kids. That's a good thing. Yeah. My man, Chris. The, uh, yep. the only other thing that settled me was athletics. You know, I had legs behind that thing. The other thing was right. I put a lot of points. So the people were able to go, okay, you know what? <laughs> you know, they go, you kids, you're not even scoring buckets and you give a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, give me something on the athletic side. That, that, yeah, that, right. That's the fight you acted up. Right. You know, Yep, to work with. Nah, that's that's so true. That's so true. My guy Chris says, Chris says, Keith Bullock was in Turkey too when he played. Yeah, our guy Keith Bullock who played in that college. Yeah, man, that is so cool. Hey, last question for you, Garfield, man, and then, I, then I'll leave you out on this one. How is married life treating you, man? I know you're a newlywed, you know what I mean? Talk, talk to us about being, you know, being a married man now, man. Talk to us about that. Mm -hmm. I've been with her for 16 years, 17 mm. years. Okay. Uh, so you were married already, married. basically. <laughs> yeah, I was married previous when, but I'm still, before her, I was married. Uh, I got married probably when I was 28. Mm -hmm. I had my first child mm -hmm. um, when I was like 27, and mm -hmm. I just didn't want to have a broken home. Yeah. So I got married, I got married for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably shouldn't have got married, but I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and it lasted like uh, five years, and then another four years to do the divorce. Mm -hmm. And then I met my wife now, like probably four or five months after mm -hmm. I separated from my wife at that point, mm -hmm. my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I've always been a relationship guy. Like I wasn't a street guy to have a whole bunch of women. Right. Running the streets. I've always been that way. And, you know, we were always good. Uh, mm -hmm. But recently, you know, I was doing this thing where I said to my girl, my wife, which is my wife now, right. like, hey, what am I doing? You're so beautiful. Why? You know, why? You, you know, why? what am I doing? And she always, always said to me, she is. She always says, "We okay. We're all right. We're good. You know, no pressure. We're fine." For 16 years, and then back in May of this year, uh -huh. I said that to her. I was at IHOP. We, you know, we work out, we go to brunch. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I'm fasting and etc. And I said that the same exact thing. And then she said to me, "I don't know. I don't know what we're doing." You know, now she's 50. I'm 50. Uh -huh. uh, she, I'm 51. She's 50. Uh -huh. and that's the first time she ever said that. And I was like. Oh wow, I guess it's that time and hit me that day. <laughs> that day we went home, I got I took a shower uh -huh. and we had a conversation and she was crying. I was like, We're getting engaged today. Wow. Getting engaged today. 
and we went to store, and she picked out her, you know, she, I, she like, I was like, we didn't get any job. Come on, we picked out her. She's like, no, you're going to pick out her. I was like, no, you're wearing the ring. I'm not picking out anything. I can pick out some sneakers. I can pick out some sweatsuits. Right. I can pick out some athletic gear. I can't pick out no ring. <laughs> so she went, and it's a funny story to that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at rings. We're looking at rings. And every ring I show her, she's like, nah, nah. She picks the ring. And you know how the ring, the price tag is in the ring, and it's usually curled up. Yes. And I'm looking at the ring, and all I see is like, you know, nine. Nine thousand. You know, I'm not saying price on purpose, but uh-huh. it says all of these nine thousand da da da, and it was kind of on sale markdown. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, I'm in the pay like six or five da da. Okay, good. So you know, she loves the ring. The ring is awesome. She loves. It. I'm like, oh, four carry. Okay, good, good. So I get to the register, <laughs> and I'm paying. I paid. I got swipe the card. I didn't even think about it. I'm signing the document. Da da da. They're sending it out to get signed, uh-huh. and you didn't think nothing of it. I go back maybe two, three weeks later to uh, do something and I have the receipt with me and I'm showing the guy and he was doing something he showed me she's like hey this is not the right receipt the receipt says like you know twenty thousand dollars more <laughs> he's like <laughs> like yeah that's how much you paid for me I go no 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 I only paid like six thousand dollars so you paid nineteen thousand dollars for this ring I was like what <laughs> long story short she got the ring she won and then my credit dropped was fifty points in the month <laughs> All, all, all for love, though, Garfield. All for love, man. No, no, but you know, she deserves it. You know, like I said, we, you know, she's great. She's just like me. She let me be me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm a homebody, so I don't like to go out. I don't do, I don't do a lot of double dates. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I work out. I fast now. Uh, so, you know, I just I keep life simple, man. You know, I, I, I've had a rough one. But, yeah. you know, life is good, man. Life is great. Yeah, life is good. Life is great. Now you're being mentored to those students, you know, who... You know, might have some issues, but they can learn a lot from your story. You know what I mean? Your your story of survival, your story of, you know, being competitive, man, and, and just sticking with it, man, and great things that come because of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my wall in my office, I have, you know, I have Maryland everything. I got my Christ King jersey up. Mm. I got my Maryland jersey up. I got my diploma up. Mm-hmm. I got all kind of accolades on the wall and things that, you know, I've done, uh, done contests I've won, et cetera, et cetera. And I tell like, hey, man, I start off with, from scratch, you know, yep. blank paper, blank canvas, yep. like literally, like literally nothing to, to, you know, who I am today, yeah. and, you know, now I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still doing stuff, you know, like, you know, I still learn from people every day, yep, you know, definitely, and, uh, you know, you just gotta be open, you just gotta be open-minded. Yeah, absolutely, man, and sharing your story, so, man, I'm, I'm glad we had an opportunity to talk to my man Garfield Smith, man, a great story, I, and I and I like ended it with the with the love story with the ring too, man. You know, she 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 got the ring she wanted. It's all for love. It's all good. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. She got what she wanted. You're right about that. Absolutely. I, 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 I truly appreciate you. You know, you have people. I know we've been trying to connect. Uh, yes. Get it on, but you know, anything. I think anything to help New York City or to keep you know keep guys' names mm-hmm. floating out and showing some of the stuff. We in the past, mm-hmm. because you know we we got a lot of film that's probably black and white, you know maybe a little bit of color. Yeah. Um, you know our, our short shorts are coming back. Yeah. But I think the one thing that we had more than anything else is we had a camaraderie. Yeah. You know we I think we generally, generally, genuinely mm-hmm. care for each other. Absolutely. Um, uh, I think we we competed like we hated each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we also you know at the end still cared about each other, still hung out with each other, still. There's a, there's a guy named Speedy. I know you know Speedy Williams. Too. Oh yeah, and oh yeah. I'm trying to get Speedy on the on the show, man. Man, Speedy. Yeah, I, 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 that's the exact cause, man. Okay. And the first time I met Speedy, I was playing at River Park Towers. Mm. Uh, playing playing pickup on the Saturday morning, and he punched me in the nuts. <laughs> uh, because I because I was sending a hard pick on him, and I'm chasing this dude around uh, uh, around the, the gym. And by the time we finished playing for three hours later, you know back then, you know you played for hours. You yep. Play one yeah. Definitely. You know, you can have three or four pair of sneakers. Yep. You know, one sneaker you wore to the park and you wore it back home. And yep. you left from there after four hours of just competing against each other, playing each other at the little corner store to buy some juice. Mm-hmm. So one of the big can juices and some juice and laugh about <laughs> whatever we used to laugh about to the state. So, you know, it's about relationships. It's sure. It's about, you know, how we can help each other going forward. Yep. You know, how we can help these kids going forward. And just show them, you know, show them a better way of how to do things. Absolutely. You know, I, I think I think that's one thing these kids are missing. And 
you know, I think a lot of kids who play the sport but don't love the sport. Mm. You know, they, 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 you know, something like mom just, mom pushes them to go do something and they do it. Yeah. Whereas we woke up, like, I'm going to go to go play. Yes. Like, this is what I'm doing today. Yep. You know, now, you know, like, I, you know, I train, you know, I train clients here and there, um, certain kids that, you know, like, hey, I'm available tomorrow from 8 to 10. Yeah, can you make it 11? No, I'm available from 8 to 10. <laughs> But my day's already planned out. That's right. And you know, they, they, they're out of, you know, they do things out of convenience. Uh, mm-hmm. Some, not all. And that, I think that's the part that, that's missing in, in this game. Definitely, man. Nah, definitely, man. I appreciate you, man. Great stories walking down memory lane. I appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you're doing in your community as well, man. Be, people are watching, man, and, and people are learning from you, man. I, I thank you for coming on today, man, Golfer. Thank I you so much, sir. If you ever come down to, if you ever in Florida, South Florida, stop on by, man. Be 60 keys every day, all day. I'm, we, we'll do that. We'll do that. Yep, with a drink. Absolutely. I have a little umbrella with, with the umbrella ones. You know, I like those. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Stay blessed, man. All right, you too, Golfer. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> All right, that is my man, Mr. Garfield Smith, joining us today. Great stuff, absolutely stupendous stuff going on here. Wow, this lighting here is really bright. Let me see what we got. Yeah, man, great, great stuff. Super stuff, my man, Garfield Smith. Man, hey, so ladies and gentlemen, I know we ran awfully late, but nah, that was good stuff, man. I'm glad everybody stayed tuned and stuck around. Great stuff. So. If we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate it as I'm going into my bag of tricks here. All right. Here we go. Theme music. (laughs) Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Transition Tuesdays. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this show and other shows you can catch on our YouTube channel, Transition Tuesdays. And when you're on the channel, please make sure you like and subscribe before you leave. Appreciate that if you would do that. Also, if you can follow me, if you haven't done so already, I don't know what's going on, but you got the opportunity. That's why we're talking about it today. Follow me on Instagram at Russ Will Transitions with an S. That's Russ Will Transitions with an S. Okay. And major again, major shout out to my special guest. Okay. Mr. Garfield Smith. Great sight. Great insight, man. Perseverance. You know what I mean? Just the grit of it all. Competitive. Competing. You know, and doing great things in the community now, man. So thank you, Garfield, for coming on, man. I appreciate you, man. And guess the Transition Tuesdays. Receive a candy gift pack. Compliments of Sweet Candy Cafe. Now, Sweet Candy Cafe is the home of Southern Sweetness, located in downtown Lumberton, North Carolina. So after the show, show almost almost over. So after the show, head over to SweetCandyCafe.com and order all your confectionery goodies. And keep in mind, they ship from anywhere. So again, remember that's SweetCandyCafe.com. All right. Also, I'd be remiss too, guys, and I thank you guys for all the uh, the thoughts and prayers for my daughter. Uh, she is suffering from COVID. She is safe on campus in LaSalle. She's quarantining right now, being isolated. She's doing quite well, and I told everybody that, you know, they've been thinking of her, and uh, she, she thanks everybody out there, and, I, and I'd like to thank everybody out there for your well wishes as well. So she's doing quite well, and I appreciate all you guys for, you know, hitting me up on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, as we say in party, happy transitioning, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless.